Hello, I'm Andrew Curley, and if you're just tuning in for the first time, uh, we are showcasing some of the student games throughout the day. I'm joined today by Paige to talk about her Teach Me One game. Hello. So, as you all have noticed, uh, my name is Paige Reeves, and I am the, assi the assistant lead and one of the artists of the Lucky Six who created the Terrible Track. And the Lucky Six is the name of your team? Yes. Does that mean you have six people on your team? We do. Wow. <laughs> very, very creative. It's very nice. So we are very lucky in who we have on our team. Can you talk about the team makeup, like yes. the different departments that are coming together? Oh yes, we have our outstanding programmer, our our two artists, and then our game designer and our two level designers. Okay. Who are all phenomenal at every part of their job, and they're not only just phenomenal on their specifics, but they can actually brought it in and do all of the work. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with Connor earlier from. Uh, Wakey Wakey, yes. saying how uh, in game development in general, and go all specifically, you kind of have to be able to wear like five different hats at the same time when you're on the team. Right? Yeah. Um, so we actually we actually have the game set up. We're going to demonstrate over the shoulder. Uh, one of your teammates is playing the game. So uh, can you just describe what the game's about? Yes. Um, the, you know the object of the game. Well, object is to try and escape the terrible trap, <laughs> mm -hmm. as it's so so pleasantly named. And it's a puzzle maze based game okay. to try and really develop these critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. And a lot of motion is involved in it because we involve the tilting mechanics. Oh, to it. Awesome. So you tilt the tablet, navigate the little sphere around the maze, avoid obstacles, interact with these element walls that will either crack and break on your touch or bounce you around and all that stuff. That's really cool. My Teach Me One game actually used tilt controls too. Oh, that's yeah. fabulous. Were you a boom boom? No, I was Leica. Ooh, and I know there is a similar game to Leica. Yeah, it was very exciting. <laughs> um, so it's sort of like one of those like those wooden box oh, games with the, the metal similar. ball, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, we took a lot of inspiration from that awesome. and mm -hmm. threw in some more elements that you would be able to interact with to make it more than just navigating and tilting. Right. This way, you actually have to pause, think. What is my next objective? What am I going to do next? Do yeah. I want to collect this star? Do I just want to go to the exit? Okay, so yeah. you have side objectives too. Yes. That's cool. So they're allowed to really navigate the space, explore what's going on, mm -hmm. take their own breaks if they want to, or they can just speed run through it. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you guys decide on this game design? Because I know one of the challenges at Guildhall is designing by committee is like, Ten people yeah. want their own kind of way to do things. So. Oh yeah, we all actually came to a really fast general consensus when oh, really? we were first initially mm -hmm. creating the concept. We wanted something that was addicting. That's what we started off with. Yeah. What was addicting? And we didn't want to involve too much of a storyline that anybody had to be committed to. Right. Because it's a mobile game. You want to just jump in, fast play, get to the objective, mm -hmm. occupy your time basically. And so we were like, what's addicting with that is just a lot of puzzle games. Yeah. And we're like, well, how can you get into that? Ooh, there's a tilting mechanism mm -hmm. in it. And it's escalated from there. So did you guys have to play other similar games to figure out the kind of vision you wanted? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We played a, that Labyrinth game and then yeah. a lot of actually legitimate maze games that were crazy in depth. There were mm -hmm. just a mass amount of balls on the screen. You didn't know where you were going. Yeah. So we took a lot of inspiration from both of those things them together. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, I can kind of see it from here, <laughs> uh, but can you talk about the, the art style a little bit? Okay, yes, yes. As the so, lead artist? <laughs> we uh, didn't want to overwhelm players because mm -hmm. we really wanted it to be a challenge. Right. Definitely open to all ages, all types of people, but still be able to challenge them knowing <laughs> that you have to escape. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to tone the art style down a notch, give it a really calming presence involved with the audio as well, and a really soothing color palette. Okay. That way you aren't just like in this intense motion where you're like anticipating a buildup yeah, of totally. everything. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I was talking with Connor about is, uh, especially in TGB1, I think the challenge for teams is uh, Merging art styles on teams of multiple artists. Did you guys encounter that problem at first? Yeah, and it was shocking to me a little bit that we that Fanny and I uh, Collaborated so well we, mm -hmm. we do have uh, Realistic art styles, but still vastly different uh, 
like softening techniques where yeah. hers is really ethereal feeling and mine's a little more hard edged but still realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first it was a little bit difficult to get those down, but we had this system where she would create the backgrounds and then I would do all the elements. Right. So that way I would take inspiration from the backgrounds she created, mm -hmm. ideas that she had, and developed a color palette from those oh, okay. to create so, the walls. Like awesome. so we have like our normal walls, our bouncy walls and yeah. glass ones. So take the color palette from there, convey what those are to the player and mm -hmm. then make sure everything fit in seamlessly. Very cool. Yeah. And you guys just had the uh, play test down at SME Main Campus, right? Oh, this week? Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, can you talk about that? Oh my gosh, yes. That actually uh, developed one of my favorite aspects about our game was mm -hmm. how well all of the ambience worked with each other. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize how well they worked with each other until the play testing. Yeah. Because people would look at everything, look at the artwork, hear the music, and just be like, whoa, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, it works so well. I feel energized, but I'm relaxed, like I can really get into this, they're not so too really frustrated. So really validated what you guys were going for. Exactly. It was, awesome. it was a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> we're at, my play test didn't go as well, but <laughs> it still ended up pretty well. But it's enlightening. It's yeah. enlightening no matter what. Yeah, you what. still learn it either way. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, I think that's about all we have and our next group is ready. Um, before I pass it over to Connor and Andrew, just want to remind our viewers, please donate. The uh, link is below this video. Uh, we're trying to hit $3,000 by the end of the weekend, and I really think we can do it. Finding the goodness of your hearts to give some money. It's for a really good cause, Children's Hospitals. Tell everyone you know to donate to the Guild Hall Extra Life Charity. So next we're bringing over to Connor and Andrew for World of Warcraft. Thanks, guys.